A Game at Dinner by an Anonymous Spy Forward from the Publisher The history behind this letter is almost as interesting and dark as the story it tells. The original letter to the mysterious Dunay was copied and began circulating around the ashlands of Vardenfell a few months ago. In time, a print found its way to the mainland and Prince Halalu Helset's palace outside Amalexia. While the reader may conclude after reading this letter that the prince would be furious about such a work, impugning his highness with great malevolence, quite the reverse was true. The prince and his mother, Queen Berenzia, had it privately printed into bound copies and sent to libraries and booksellers throughout Morrowind. As a matter of record, the prince and the queen have not officially stated whether the letter is a work of pure imagination or based on an actual occurrence. The House Drays has publicly denounced the work, and indeed no one named Donay, despite the suggestions in the letter, has ever been linked to the House. We leave the reader to interpret the letter as he or she believes. Neris Gan, Publisher Dark Liege Donay, you asked for a detailed description of my experience last night and the reasons for my plea to the House Dray for another assignment. I hope I have served you well in my capacity as informant in the court of Prince Helseth, a man who I have stated in many previous reports could teach Molag Ball how to scheme. As you know, I've spent nearly a year now working my way into his inner circle of advisors. He was in need of friendship when he first arrived in Morrowind and eagerly took to me and a few others. Still, he was disinclined to trust any of us, which is perhaps not surprising given his tenuous position in Morrowind society. For your unholiness's recollection, the prince is the eldest son of Berenzia, who was once the queen of Morrowind and once the queen of the High Rock Kingdom of Wayrest. At the death of her husband, Prince Helset's stepfather, King Edwire, there was a power struggle between the prince and Edwire's daughter, the Princess Elsana. Though details of what transpired are imperfect, it is clear that Elsana won the battle and became queen. She banished Helset and Berenzia. Berenzia's only other child, Morgaya, had already left court to marry and become queen of the Somerset Isle Kingdom of Firsthold. Berenzia and Helseth crossed the continent to return to Morrowind only last year. They were well received by Berenzia's uncle, our current king, Halalu Anton Elthen, who had taken the throne after Berenzia's abdication more than 40 years ago. Berenzia made it clear that she had no designs on reclaiming the throne, but merely to retire to her family estates. Helseth, as you know, has lingered in the royal court, and many have whispered that while he lost the throne of Wayrest, he does not intend to lose the throne of Morrowind at Lethan's death. I've kept your unholiness informed of the prince's movements, meetings, and plots, as well as the names and characters of his other advisors. As you may recall, I've often thought that I'm not the only spy in Helseth's court. I have told you before that a particular Dunmer counselor of Helseth looked like a fellow I had seen in the company of Tholar Sarani, the arch canon of the Tribunal Temple. Another, a young Nord woman, has been verified to visit the Imperial Fortress in Balmora. Of course, in their cases, they might well have been on Helseth's own business, but I couldn't be certain. I had begun to think myself paranoid as the prince himself when I found myself doubting the sincere loyalty of the prince's chamberlain, Burgess, a Breton who had been in his employ since his days in the court of Wayrest. That is the background on that night, last night. Yesterday morning I received a curt invitation to dine with the prince. Based only on my own paranoia, I dispatched one of my servants, who is a good and loyal servant to the house Dray, to watch the place and report back anything unusual. Just before dinner, he returned and told me what he had witnessed. A man, cloaked in rags, had been given entrance into the palace, and had stayed there for some time. When he left, my servant saw his face beneath the cloak. An alchemist of infamous repute, said to be a leading supplier of exotic poisons.
A fine observer, my servant also noticed that the alchemist entered the palace smelling of wickwheat, bitter green, and something alien and sweet. When he left, he was odorless. He had come to the same conclusion as I did. The prince had procured ingredients to prepare a poison. Bitter green alone is deadly when eaten raw, but the other ingredients suggest something far deeper. As your holiness can doubtless imagine, I went to dinner that night prepared for any eventuality. All of Prince Hillset's other counselors were in attendance, and I noticed that all were slightly apprehensive. Of course, I imagined that I was in a nest of spies, and all knew of the prince's mysterious meeting. It is just as likely that some knew of the alchemist's visit, while others were simply concerned by the nature of the prince's invitation, and still others merely unconsciously adopted the tense disposition of their fellow, better-informed counselors. The prince, however, was in fine mettle, and soon had everyone relaxed and at ease. At nine, we were all ushered into his dining hall, where the feast had been laid out. And what a feast! Honeyed gore apples, fragrant stews, roasts in various blood sauces, and every variety of fish and fowl expertly and ostentatiously prepared. Crystal and gold flagons of wine, flin, shin, and mazed were at our seats to be savored as appropriate with each course. As tantalizing as the aromas were, it occurred to me that in such a maze of spices and flavors, a discreet poison would be undetectable. Throughout the meal, I maintained the illusion of eating the food and drinking the liquor, but I was surreptitious and swallowed nothing. Finally, the plates and food were cleared from the table, and a tureen of spicy broth was placed in the center of the banquet. The servant who brought it then retired, closing the banquet hall door behind him. It smells divine, my prince, said the marchioness, Colger, the Nord woman, but I cannot eat another thing. Your highness, I added, feigning a tone of friendliness and slight intoxication, you know that everyone at this table would gladly die to put you on the throne of Morwin, but is it really necessary that we gorge ourselves to death? The others at the table agreed with appreciative groans. Prince Helseth smiled. I swear by Varnima the gifter, my dark liege, even you have never seen a smile such as this one. Ironic words. You see, an alchemist visited me today, as some of you already doubtless know. He showed me how to make a marvelous poison and its antidote. A most potent poison, excellent for my purposes. No restoration spell will aid you once you've ingested it. Only the antidote in the terrine will save you from certain death. And what a death, from what I've heard. I'm eager to see if the effects are all that the alchemist promised. It should be horribly painful for the afflicted, but quite entertaining. No one said a word. I could feel my heart beating hard in my chest. Your Highness, said Alarat, the Dunmer I suspected of alliance with the temple. Have you poisoned someone at this table? You are very astute, Alarat, said Prince Helseth, looking about the table, eyeing each of his advisers carefully. Little wonder I value your counsel, as indeed I value all in this room. It would be perhaps easiest for me to say who I haven't poisoned. I haven't poisoned any who serve but one master, any whose loyalty to me is sincere. I haven't poisoned any person who wants to see King Helseth on the throne of Morwind. I haven't poisoned anyone who isn't a spy for the Empire, the Temple, the House of Telvanni, the House of Redoran, the House of Indoral, and the House of Dre. Your unholiness, he looked directly at me at his last words. I know that in certainty. My face is practiced at keeping my thoughts from showing, but I immediately thought of every secret meeting I've had, every coded message I've sent to you and the house, my dark liege. What could he know? What could he, even without knowing, suspect? I felt my heart beating even faster. Was it fear or poison? I couldn't speak, 
certain as I was that my voice would betray my calm facade. Those loyal to me who wish harm on my enemies may be wondering how I can be certain that the poison has been ingested. Is it possible that the guilty party, or dare I say parties, were suspicious and merely pretended to eat and drink tonight? Of course. But even the craftiest of pretenders would have to raise a glass to his or her lips and put empty forks or spoons in their mouths to play the charade. The food, you see, was not poisoned. The cups and cutlery were. If you did not partake out of fear, you're poisoned just the same, and sadly, missed an excellent roast. Sweat beaded on my face, and I turned from the prince so he would not see. My fellow advisers, all of them, were frozen in their seats. From the marchionist Kolgar, white with fear, to Kima Ineb, visibly shaken, from the furrowed and angry brow of Alarat to the statue-like stare of Burgess. I couldn't help thinking then, could the prince's entire counselorship be comprised of nothing but spies? Was there any person at the table loyal? And then I thought, what if I were not a spy myself? Would I trust Helseth to know that? No one knows better than his advisors both the depth of the prince's paranoia and utter implacability of his ambition. If I were not a spy for the house Dray, even then would I be safe. Could a loyalist be poisoned because of a not-so-innocent misjudgment? The others must have been thinking the same, loyalists and spies alike. While my mind whirled, I could hear the prince's voice addressing all assembled. The poison acts quickly. If the antidote is not taken within one minute from now, there will be death at the table. I could not decide whether I had been poisoned or not. My stomach ached, but I reminded myself it might have been the result of sitting at a sumptuous banquet and not partaking. My heart shook in my chest, and a bitter taste like tamaru root stung my lips. Again, was it fear or poison? These are the last words you will hear if you are disloyal to me said Prince Helseth, still smiling that damned smile as he watched his advisers squirming in their seats. Take the antidote and live. Could I believe him? I thought of what I knew of the prince and his character. Would he kill a self-confessed spy at his court, or would he rather send the vanquished back to his masters? The prince was ruthless, but either possibility was within his manner. Surely the theatricality of this whole dinner was meant to be a presentation to instill fear. What would my ancestors say if I joined them after sitting at a table, eventually dying of poison? What would they say if I took the antidote, confessing my allegiance to you and the house Dray, and was summarily executed? And I confess, I thought of what you might do to me even after I was dead. I had grown so light-headed and filled with my own thoughts that I did not see Burgess jump from his seat. I was only suddenly aware that he had the terrain in his hand and was gulping down the liquid within. There were guards all around, though I never noticed them entering. Burgess, said Prince Helseth, still smiling. You have spent some time at Ghostgate, House Redoran? You don't know, Burgess laughed sourly. No house. I report to your stepsister, the Queen of Wayrest. I've always been in her employ. By Akatosh, you poisoned me because you thought I was working for some damnable dark elves? You're half right, said the prince. I didn't guess who you were working for, or even that you were a spy. But you're also wrong about me poisoning you. You poisoned yourself when you drank from the tureen. Your unholiness, you don't need to hear how Burgess died. I know that you have seen much over the many, many years of your existence, but you truly don't want to know. I wish I could erase the memory of his agonies from my own mind. The council was dismissed shortly thereafter. 
I do not know if Prince Helseth knows or suspects that I too am a spy. I do not know how many others that night, last night, were as close as I was from drinking from the train before Burgess did. I only know that if the prince does not suspect me now, he will. I cannot win at the games he mastered long ago at the court of Wayrest, and I beg your unholiness, my dark liege Dunne, to use your influence in the house Dray and dismiss your loyal servant from his charge. Publisher's Note Of course, the anonymous writer's signature has not been on any reprint of the letter since the original.